Man, Psalm 125 is ju just amazing. Uh, God's word is uh, relevant and uh, applicable no matter where we're at in our lives, no matter where we are on the earth, no matter where we might travel to, uh, because we are always going to be suffering storms, I think, in our lives. We just live in a fallen world and uh, among fallen people, and that combination results in all kinds of storms coming into God's into the lives of all people and also in the lives of God's people. Don't ever think that because you're a Christian, you're never going to have problems or because you're a Christian, you're going to sail through life uh, without any challenges. I think about the uh, uh, Lord's apostles themselves who uh, were with him uh, crossing the Sea of Galilee when suddenly a huge storm came up unexpectedly uh, and uh, threatened to overturn the boat. And uh, what did they do? They had to turn to the Lord and ask him to help them. And that's what we see in this psalm today. Let me switch our view over to that psalm. And uh, we see that um, in this particular song of ascent, uh, imagine, if you will, uh, the pilgrims uh, traveling to Jerusalem for Passover or for the Feast of Booths or Pentecost. And they're traveling from anywhere in Israel and perhaps anywhere in the world for that matter. And uh, surrounded by um, storms, surrounded by the storm of opposition, the storm of prejudice, or the storm of ridicule, uh, surrounded by storms of their own insecurities, uh, their own fears, their own uh, reluctance to go, perhaps, and going out of obligation. But um, this uh, psalm helps them to um, remember and celebrate the fact that those who trust in the Lord, as verse 1 says, are as Mount Zion cannot be moved, but abides forever. Let's just meditate on that. This is, again, a short psalm here, so I won't bother to go through an explanation of an outline, but I encourage you to read this and read this prayerfully and meditatively. Um, those who trust. So there are groups of people who don't trust in the Lord. There are those people alive in the world, perhaps even in your church, uh, who don't trust in the Lord. And by trust, we put our we mean put our confidence in him, put our uh, dependence upon him, to uh, put all of our expectations in him. To trust in the Lord is to uh, trust as we do in gravity, uh, that we know it's going to take over. We know it's going to have its effect. And we know, we know as we trust in the Lord that he's going to have his effect. And his effect is that lowercase Lord reminds us of his uh, promises to us, his um, covenant faithfulness toward his people. Have a comparison here. Mount Zion cannot be moved, but a mind's forever. Um, so again, this is saying that uh, those who trust in the Lord are going to have stability in this life. They're going to have um, uh, confidence and reliance. They're not going to be moved. They're not going to be blown off course. They're not going to be uh, disrupted, but they are going to abide forever. So every storm that comes into the life of a believer uh, causes that believer to trust in the Lord and abide in him even more. Uh, every storm that comes into the life of an unbeliever uh, perhaps will be used by God to bring that unbeliever to faith as they search for something to trust in and find nothing but the Lord and when I say nothing but the Lord, what else is there to trust in? We know that uh, as believers. So how do we apply this? Well, I'd say one way to apply this is to uh, look at each storm that comes into your life. Look at each trial that erupts, each disappointment, each sorrow as an opportunity to abide, an opportunity to continue to trust, an opportunity to confess your trust. Just as these pilgrims were going to Jerusalem and uh, perhaps surrounded by uh, those who turn aside to their crooked, way, crooked ways, the, those who are doers of iniquity, surrounded by them on all sides, they trusted in the Lord.
They trusted in him to protect them, trusted him in him to guide them on their journey, to bring them safely to the Jerusalem. And I think um, that we can use every um, bump in the road to uh, point us back to the uh, Lord of the New Jerusalem, where we're heading. How do we do that today? Uh, think about a trial you're facing now, and I'm sure you're facing one. Uh, we're guaranteed to have trials in our lives. Uh, perhaps you've just came through one, and the Lord has given you a respite. Perhaps there's one on the horizon, and you can see it coming. Whatever it is, uh, think about a trial, a recent one, a current one, or a future one, and use that trial to affirm your trust in the Lord. Use that trial to affirm that he's going to see you through, that he's going to uh, be your stable place and that place where you will have a firm foundation and not be moved. Jesus talked about this in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27, where is a wise and foolish man facing uh, the trials um, and the wise man was the one who not only heard his word, but did it. And may you be that wise man who, as trials approach you, you not only hear the Lord's word, but you do it. You put your confidence, you put your trust, you abide.